Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode. And this week I'm gonna be showing you guys exactly how I quarantine my fish. May it not be the right way, may not be the wrong way, it's just the way I did it so you guys can follow along. A lot of this information and a lot of these methods I have were not drawn about by myself. If you guys out there know who Humble Fish is, great guy, has done a ton of research when it comes to parasites. I think he's really the go-to guy when it comes to diseases and parasites. Uh, so Humble Fish, he does have a website. You guys can head over, check it out. And a lot of the methods, actually all of the methods that I'm using were directly from him. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. The two main medications we're going to talk about, and actually the only ones I use are going to be Copper Power and GenoCure. Now, I won't get into the full details of either of these, uh, just very briefly run down and kind of what they do. Uh, when it comes to Copper Power and why I'm using this over Seachem's Coopermine, a lot of people say for angels, wrasses, copper power is a lot safer and fish tend to do a lot better, at least when it comes to the finicky fish. Also, a lot of people mention that copper power tends to stay in the water a lot better than coopermine. Uh, it doesn't really, I don't know if evaporation is what occurs, uh, but in other words, whenever you dose it, it tends to hold that dosage for a lot longer without you noticing any drop. Also, copper power is meant to be run at 2.5 ppm. That's what they consider therapeutic. In my personal opinion, coopermine I think runs at 0.75. You have a way bigger window uh, since this runs at 2.5 ppm to really buffer it, if you will. Now for copper power, obviously it treats ick, velvet. Uh, also you can see here on the label, it says external parasites, ick, udinium. I have no idea what udinium is, um, and fungus. So it's a great all around medication to use. Now, a lot of people may be asking if every fish I get is gonna be quarantined. The answer is yes. Some people wanna look at the fish for some time. If they show no signs, then they wanna treat. Personally, I've done quite a bit of research and I found that there's some parasites that will not show up months, months later. Last thing I want is to add a fish in the display and then those parasites show up. The next medication we're gonna be using is General Cure. Now, General Cure, you can see here on the box itself, it treats parasitic fish disease, gill and skin flukes. You could see a few other things it'll also treat, but really I saw that for saltwater, those are the two ones it targets very, very well. Now for General Cure, you're gonna notice I talk about two methods of dosing it. One is in the water column, and the second one is gonna be mixing it with foods. Now, when you're mixing it in the water column, you're trying to treat external parasites. When you mix it with a food, you're trying to treat internal parasites. A lot of, I guess the easiest way you know if your fish has an internal uh, worm is gonna be if it's pooping white stringy poop. Now, the last thing I have here, it's not a medication, it's Seachem Focus, at least I don't think it's a medication. It binds medication to, to fish food. So, the only reason this is used is when we're trying to deworm a fish with general cure. Remember, deworm is when we're treating the food and not the water column. So Humble Fish has a recipe that shows you guys exactly what ratios to mix, what types of food you can use. I actually did use it to deworm them because I noticed one fish kind of had iffy poop and it was actually very easy and surprisingly the fish found it very palatable. And that's what the focus is. It's meant to bind it, make it where the fish will actually eat it. Not only that, another thing I actually found out is by you using Seachem Focus with General Cure, it actually makes it reef safe. So if you needed to treat a fish inside your tank, as long as you're using Focus and General Cure within the food, you can totally do that. Now, I probably won't do that just because I don't know how I feel about it, but a lot of people actually said that they've done it without any issues whatsoever. Now, with the tank here, I'll give you guys a brief rundown of what I'm running, and it's very simple as you're gonna see. We got a heater, we got an ink bird hooked up to the heater. You really don't need that. I just did it because I had one laying around. We have the Seachem Ammonia Alert to let you know if ammonia levels get high or dangerous. We got two hiding spots here. After doing my first round of quarantine, I should have put a few more and a few bigger ones. Again, lesson learned. Next, we have the Marineland uh, Penguin 200 filter. The reason I'm using this over the original sponge filter is once you're done running copper, if you wanna run, let's say, carbon to get the medication out of the water, it's a lot easier to run it through a filter like this than it would be through a sponge filter. There really isn't a way to run it through a sponge filter. So that's the main reason I got this filter. Also in the back, something you can't see, you're just gonna have to trust me, the whole rear chamber here is filled with Cifarax, 
media. It's a great media I've used in the past. And honestly, believe it or not, through the whole quarantine process, not once did ammonia even move. And I think it's all thanks to that Cifrax. Now, very briefly, I don't, this can be a very long topic, but I don't want to make it a long topic. You'll read some people say that beneficial bacteria dies when you introduce copper. And that's not true. At least from my research, I talked to Humblefish about it. He said, he said, yes, yeah, some may die, but it's not enough to put a dent in the system where it's going to throw your beneficial bacteria off. So you're going to read and you'll probably hear that going around quite a bit say no anytime you do copper you're wasting your time cycling because everything's going to die that is not true and again it's not me saying it it's i did extensive research by people that actually you know know what they're doing the bacteria is still going to be there and it's still going to do its job next we do have a light and i do have a fan for the summertime this tank is in the garage that's also why i have the ink bird on the bottom it's a heater and cooler so in the summer if the garage gets too hot this will kick in but again that's really not necessary as far as the equipment goes that's really it there's nothing else to it try and keep it as simple as you can and you'll see it really doesn't take that much the next things i do have are specific pieces that are only used for the quarantine let me show you an example i actually have two salinity testers this one you can see the box and the unit are labeled for qt only last thing you want to do guys when you're doing quarantine is you do not want to mix anything you're using in the quarantine with your main display such as buckets siphoning hose nets and salinity tester so everything here is for the quarantine you can see i even have a pump back there everything in this location is only meant to be used here and never should leave my little station so i have two buckets to obviously perform water changes i got a siphoning hose here i got a net and i have the old sponge filter there i honestly thought i was having nitrate issues which i'll talk about when i was quarantined originally and a few people brought up it's probably the sponge filter just trapping a bunch of gunk they're like if you're not rinsing it out it all it's doing is really trapping all that bad stuff causing your nitrates to go up now, while we're on this topic, I highly recommend you to do one to two water changes a week. You can probably get away with one if you're doing about one to two fish. This is a 20 gallon tank. If you're like me where you had four fish, you may have to do a bit more water change. That's a big mistake I made. Uh, the fish, if you guys remember actually, or two of the fish broke out with cauliflower. Thankfully, they're already in the display and the cauliflower is gone, but it was all due to me not doing enough water changes. So that could be solved very simply by doing a nitrate test. If they're getting above 30 to 40 PPM, I, su I suggest to do a water change. Luckily, it's a 20 gallon tank. So five gallons goes a long way and it's very simple to do. Now it's very important when you're doing your water change that you also match the copper that's in the tank. So remember, we're trying to get the tank to 2.5 and hold it to 2.5. The new water you're mixing also has to be at 2.5. And honestly, guys, it could not have been any easier than with this Hannah Checker. It, I kid you not, it takes me exactly 45 seconds to perform a test. You put sample water, press a button, take it out, put the powder, mix it for 15 seconds, put it back in, and wait for your result. It's really that simple. I mean, I cannot imagine people doing copper tests without this and using the little color vials. I mean, that would just drive me nuts. This made it so much easier. So if you are setting up a quarantine, if there's one piece of equipment that I say absolutely do not skimp out on is the copper tester by Hannah. Now, one of the last things I wanna cover is this piece here. This is a little calendar. I know we're ready, not in December, but I left it here so you get an idea of exactly how I did it. So I printed these out, uh, just Google searched a calendar for whatever month and whatever year, printed them out, taped them next to the quarantine itself, and here I was able to monitor. So the first dosing started on Tuesday the 1st, and you wanna take a total of five to six days to reach full therapeutic level, which is 2.5. So there's a calculator for that. Uh, you guys can see it here. You guys can also find it in the link. Now this calculator, I think Humblefish made it and it's specifically for copper power. It makes it so easy to figure out exactly how much copper you need per your gallons of not only tank volume, but even when you're doing a water chain. So I highly recommend you guys to save this. I'll have it in the description as well. So once you do reach full therapeutic level, which is 2.5, you want to maintain it for 30 days. Now, you can get away with 14 days. It's very doable. And honestly, I'd rather see you guys doing 14 than doing zero. So if you're absolutely in a rush and you don't want to do the full 30, you can absolutely get away with 14. 
Now it's very important that you maintain 2.5 ppm whether you're doing 14 days, a full 14 days in ECB 2.5, or whether you're doing 30. If ever the number drops below, I think it's 1.5, the clock restarts all over again. So make sure it doesn't fall. That's a good thing with copper power. The lowest it ever got, I think was 2.44. Anytime you're topping off water in the tank, guess what? The new water you're adding in there is gonna dilute the copper. So keep that in mind. I figured out my tank every time I added water, I'd add about 0.1 mil. Uh, so it just became a ritual I knew every time I did that. Your tank may be different, but you'll get in rhythm with it very quick. So the sixth, we reached therapeutic. The seventh, we dosed a general cure. Per the box, it says to dose it again 40 hours later, 48 hours after that, do a water change. Now, Humble Fish also has a parasite calendar. It's the one you're seeing here. And it once you input your salinity and your temperature, it tells you the date that the eggs will probably be hatching for those parasites you were trying to treat with Genocure. So based on this calendar, you're able to know exactly when you should do a second round of dosing. Now the second round isn't 100%, it doesn't have to be done, but I figured if we're going through all this trouble, why not do it? So the second round of Genocure was on the 15th, and then again, 48 hours later, another dosage, 48 hours after that, did a water change. Now the following week, you're gonna notice I started doing the general cure with focus. I actually did that for the full 10 days. So from the uh, 21st through the 25th, and I gave them a little break, and I started again from the 28th uh, to the 1st here. So that was when I mixed the food. I'll be showing you guys here real quick how I did that. It's very simple, didn't really take much at all. Today we are going to be mixing the medication with the food to treat any internal worms that are in the fish. Quick rundown of what we're going to need. We're going to need a packet of General Cure, API General Cure, which you find here. Seachem Focus, and this is going to be used to bind the food to the medication. You're going to need a small container, hold the medicated food. I got one of these uh, urine cups because you're able to seal it so when you put it in the fridge, it's less prone to getting any bacteria so you can use it for two to three days after you make it. Next, you're gonna need the food. You can either use frozen food or pellets. I believe pellets is gonna grab a lot better. So I'm using pellets and you're gonna need some way to measure a tablespoon of either frozen or in my case, pellets. The last thing you see here is a small little cup of salt water, you can either use salt water or any fish vitamins or fish supplement as far as a liquid that you like to use. Everything you guys are gonna be seeing here, it was taken off of Humble Fish's website uh, to medicate your fish. So I do not wanna take any credit for it whatsoever. Grab your Seachem Focus and you're gonna notice it has a little scooper. Now that scoop there, it scoops up about one eighth of the focus. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Pour that inside. I'm gonna use the same scooper to grab some of the API general cure. Before I do that, I'm gonna give this a little rinse. So using the same scooper, open up your general cure packet, grab a scoopful down in. Now the reason you're using Seachem Focus is just to bind the medication with the food, make it more palatable. Now we can open up our pellets. I don't have a tablespoon scooper. This is only a teaspoon, so it's gonna take three teaspoons to make one tablespoon. So that's the food with the medication. And then just add some salt water or fish vitamins, your choice. Doesn't take a lot. Kind of want it to be a, a slurry, if you will. Pretty happy with how that came out. You don't want to add too much water, just enough to kind of get everything moist and get the medication within the food. Before you feed this, at least let it sit for about 30, 40 minutes. I'd say an hour just to be safe. And if you don't have a lid on it, make sure you cover it and put it in the refrigerator. You can also freeze it. And the reason you wanna cover it, you don't want any other bacteria getting in it, spoiling the food, because then you'd be dealing with a bigger issue of you feeding the fish pretty bad food that can get, make them really sick. So just make sure you cover it or get something with a lid. Uh, you can store it. I'd say about two, three days, you should be fine if you're refrigerating it. Anything longer than that, I'd rather just make a new batch. A few moments later. Anytime you are feeding the fish general cure, uh, bound with the food, you don't want to feed them more than two times a day of that medicated food. Anything after that, you risk overdosing. Uh, so one to two times, if you need to feed more through the day, just feed them the not medicated food. But honestly, in the quarantine, you shouldn't try to get them as fat as possible because uh, they're in such little water, you're just gonna pollute the water is really all you're gonna do. And then the last few days, I pretty much was a waiting game. Once you're done with the 30 days, 
bring down your copper to around 1 to 1.5 ppm and just observe the fish. If you don't see anything going on, then you can go ahead and add it to the display. The way I thought of it, I waited a few extra days, but I figured if you're holding copper at 2.5 for a full 30 days, you can almost guarantee that the real nasty parasites we're after, they've been obliterated. Now, two other things I didn't cover. When it comes to temperature, I maintain this tank at 80 degrees, salinity at 1.018. I think that's already considered hyposalinity. It just helps, both of those things just help uh, rid the parasites. Uh, so I think it's really combating everything from every angle possible. So guys, that's gonna be it for this video. I really hope I didn't bore you guys. Uh, more importantly, you learned something and you saw that it's really not as difficult as you may have thought quarantining was. It's very easy and I honestly think everybody can do it, especially if you have the space. I know a lot of you don't have the space. I mean, for years I didn't have any space and we just kind of wing it, right? But you don't know the enjoyment of knowing that you're adding quarantine fish that are gonna live a long, healthy life in your reef tank and you don't have to see them die to something that could have completely been avoided. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. I will have a link to all the products that you can purchase, almost all these products I got from Amazon, except for the tank and the fish. Everything else that I did purchase from Amazon, you will see a link in the description. I'll also have a link to Humble Fish's website. Humble Fish is copper calculator and Humble Fish is uh, par or I, I don't know if it's Humble Fish is the calendar. Uh, the parasite calendar but i'll have all that down below in the description so if you guys have any questions comments or concerns please leave them down below i thank each and every one of you very much for watching as always happy reefing